Good morning. It is a lovely sunny day and I'm here in the Lake District National Park. I'm feeling a bit battered and worn today. I really caught the sun yesterday. My face is reacting not so well. I'm weary but in spirit I am excited. Today is my last day and I thought in traditional barn style we'd finish with Grisdale Pike, Hope Gill Head and Sand Hill. So we're going to head up, do those three peaks and then we'll come down the valley for the crazy mammoth drive home. But I wanted to share this walk with you. It's really, really lovely. The weather's looking awesome and uh, you can't really go wrong with this route. That's the village of Braithwaite behind me. I'm kind of parked right on the edge of the village by the church and uh, I'm just working my way up this road and then from here, We'll turn left and we'll begin the initial ascent up to Grizzledale Pike. The turn off from the road was just beside a disused quarry, often used as a car park by walkers. Make sure to get there early if you want to grab a space. Grizzledale Pike, let's go. The walk we're doing today is actually a shorter version of a very popular horseshoe route called the Coldale Round where instead of dropping down where we're going to drop down you continue on on the other side of the ridge get some more peaks in but today because of time we're just uh keeping it short but this is such a great walk if you're new to fell walking and you just want to get some more peaks in we'll expect epic views today hopefully it will be really clear Pretty grand views here of Skiddor and Blencathra. You know that if they're out of the cloud, you're in for a good day. The path was easy to follow and often lined with wildflowers, their nectars being utilised by fluffy bees of every shape and size. There's this band of low cloud in the valley over there. Probably not as dense as it was, but still it's pretty spectacular. So we've left the cool of the forest behind, it wasn't a long stretch but definitely a luxury and now we're climbing through this bracken stretch until we get to more exposed rock. It is hot today, have I said that? I don't even know, you might hear that a lot today, it is hot. Great views here at the summit. You can see the route we've got to take. It really is quite a short ascent, to be honest, just a little bit steep. Not too bad though as it goes. We can also see the rest of the ridge that really does make a great walk. So that's the Coldale Round. And uh, you can see like Crag Hill, Sail, Outer Side, Style End, and then it drops down there back into Braithwaite. So it's a fantastic route. Just got to allow a bit longer than I have today, unfortunately. Just means I have to come back and Walk that with you as well. <laughs> How cool is this? So there's this little body of water here and these white tufts here are what we call cotton grass. So they tend to grow around bodies of water here in the mountains. And you can see just how sort of fluffy and soft they are. <laughs> you can make a nice pillow out of that, but you need a lot of it. Well and truly working on the ascent now. It's a good climb, get your heart rate up. Loving this. There's some jets that keep flying past, really loud. You can hardly see them, they're so far away though. 
Higher up, and the slopes were carpeted in bilberry bushes. It was still a bit early for the harvest, but I certainly kept my eye out for their juicy blue orbs of goodness. Cycling myself up for this last stretch to the summit. It's kind of quite cool how you can see all the way up and the bit of the scramble very, very near the top. But uh, we're making really good time. But we're nearly at the top of Grisdale Pike. It's gonna feel good to get there. There we go. Oh, boom. Grisdale Pike. 791 meters above sea level. Oh, that was pretty insane. And look what we can see, Scotland! <laughs> okay, so next destination is Hope Gill Head, 770 metres above sea level. And then from there we'll make our way over to sand and then begin our descent. But uh, there's such a nice ridge up here. It's so scenic. You can see all the way over to Cat Bells, Dale Head, Hinderscarf, even the higher fells over there. It is clear today. Once again, the path was very straightforward in terms of navigation, just following the ridge with vast panoramic views in every direction. Bit of a scramble up here. This little climb doesn't actually have a name, but we got Hobcasting Crags. Just down here, and Hope Gilhead's over there. So we're going up and over, and then back up to Hope Gilhead on the other side. If I wanted to, I could begin descending now, to be honest. There's a path here that drops down and then work, works its way down, but uh, it's really not that far to Hope Gilhead, and then that's sand, and then we'll come down and join that path down there. I don't know why I keep calling it sand. It's actually Sand Hill, but I don't know, either we're super close friends or I'm kind of dreaming of beaches. <laughs> Very near the top now of Hope Gill Head. Still feeling quite weary, but uh, making sure I enjoy every step forward. It's such a blessing to be able to be here in this place on my own in the mountains. and. Uh, I was kind of thinking how crucial it is kind of in life as well as when you're in the mountains to even when you don't feel like it or feel able to keep putting one foot in front of the other the pace doesn't matter you'll almost always though receive a reward of some kind and for me here it's these views it's the clean air that I'm able to breathe and it's just a real sense of achievement and freedom that you get up here in the mountains. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. How spectacular are these crags though? Really rugged and pretty amazing. Keep moving, come on. <laughs> the mountains always cause a concoction of emotion. And as always, the last push to the summit gave an exhilarating feeling. A mix of anticipation, relief and excitement. Last couple of steps. And here we are, Hope Gilhead, 770 meters above sea level. Man, what a place. I think I'm officially going to rename this mountain Peak of Hope, because even if you have a cotton grass seeds worth of hope, you can keep moving to the top of your mountain. Wow. This is what the Lake District is all about. 
it's about pushing for those peaks and it's about enjoying the landscape that is so freely accessible. I'm so thankful I live in a time where this place is protected and I can come here and roam. Well, that's it really now. We're just gonna head to the final little peak, which is Sand Hill. And then from there we begin our descent. So this is the final highest point that I'll stand on during my time in the Lake District this week. It has been the most wonderful, wonderful time. The mountains are where I belong. They have my heart and soul and they'll forever stay in my mind. Whoa. Last summit for the day, last set of high views, this is Sand Hill, 756 meters above sea level. Boom. scree stuff to navigate getting down here it should be good and you can see where the path goes so where that big one comes down and then it just drops down there it's quite a steep descent actually when it levels out quite quickly because it drops quite quickly over there. They're not on our path but the sound carries and they look good. Okay, let the descent begin. You can see where we're gonna go, down around there and then on the miners path which is the straight one by the river all the way back to Braithwaite in the car. I love how the path just kind of curves and curves and curves and curves. <laughs> so basically now then we're just working our way down into Coldale Beck which we're going to follow along a nice easy path and uh, that just basically like contours the mountainside. But we can also see evidence of mining down here. We've got the workshop, we've got the kind of scree in the mountainside there. It's such a picture of history and yet it's very much in the present. Force Crag Mine was the last working metal mine in the lakes prior to its abandonment in 1991. Lead, zinc and barites were sought after for over a hundred years, with the job of the mill being to separate the minerals from each other. The site is now a site of special scientific interest, with the current building dating to the early 1900s. Here we are. This is Coldale Beck, across the stepping stones. Ha. All right, goodbye, fells. We're headed back to the village. It's really lovely actually just to be able to walk on this well-maintained track that leads to the mine with the beck just meandering alongside down through the valley and as I journey now my mind's just flashing with images of positive memories from this last week you know all the fell tops all of the adventures and climbs that it's taken to get to those tops and then sometimes some real challenging sections taking us right back down to the bottom I often find the descents quite challenging in here and on my legs, but uh, we've made it this far and it's been such a wonderful experience to be able to share this with you. I really hope it's inspired you to come to the lakes or if you've not been for a while to come back to the lakes. And I always feel so captivated in my heart by this beautiful, beautiful landscape and sorrowful when it comes to leaving, but I'm very thankful that I have the knowledge that as far as I'm aware, this national park is going nowhere. So I'll be able to come back 
and journey even more with you in the future. And until then, guys, enjoy your adventures and stay wild. <laughs>